Hi learners, in this video, we are going to look into the poem Homeward by Basie Ikpi. Basie Ikpi was a Nigerian-born American poet. She have moved to America with her parents in her childhood. Homeward is a spoken word poem. Such poems are presented in the way of a storytelling. You can see it in YouTube. I will give the link of the poem in the description box. Please go check it out and you will understand how spoken word poems are presented. Such poems are presented in the way of a storytelling. In the poem, Basie Ikpi speaks about her native culture or the Nigerian culture and language and she says that she have lost that culture as she started living in America. We can see the pain of the poet in losing her native culture and language. Now let's get into the words of the poem. I have divided this poem into three parts. It's a bit long poem. So let's look into the first part. Today, I remember my grandmother. As she attempts to connect with her second children, she finds the only English words she knows from somewhere hidden in the belly of her 4 foot 9 inch body and instead of a wonke, she greets us with bye bye. Beckoning us into her thin clay colored arms, she has my mother's face etched with time, peers at me, me from eyes wide and dark like mine. I walk into these arms, the ones that mothered my mother. Taught her how to mother me, inhale the history from her skin. She reminds me of the little girl, bow legged and round faced, holding roasted corn in one hand and a fistful of chin chin in the other, still begging for orange fanda to wash it all down. I remember her voice, firm yet loving. A A Mambesi Agiwaiwi. You must eat then drink. Sometimes I forget, but she remembers the small scared girl carried away on an iron bird to America. Seems like that same bird has returned only to replace her. That perfect girl with me, this strange tongue-tied woman. The one that can barely say hello. Without the clicks and mons, the dips and tones of white man's language, she listens now as I struggle with a madam. The poet starts the poem by remembering the memories of her grandmother. She is describing the size of her grandmother and says that her grandmother welcomed her with the only English words she knows that was bye-bye. Then she describes her affection towards her grandmother in her words. Grandmother taught her mother how to be a mother. She learned the history of their land through the grandmother. Her grandmother used to walk behind her and her siblings to feed them. She was a small scared girl before she went to America. Now she is bold as Americans. She has returned back to her native land to replace the old girl. She is now much into American culture and language. She has lost her native culture and language. Hence, she can't say even a hello without the influence of white man's language. This is all what she says in this part. Now let's look into the rest of the poem. It breaks my heart to realize that I can only love her clearly in English. But tears do not replace the words. Love will not make it easier. Make it less heavy. Desire will not help me remember. What the words taste like flowing like the cross river from my tongue. But this is not my only tongue. Insolent and heavy with the awkward moments of amber waves. East or west, this is not my village. And my heart still longs for my grandmother's voice. Steady and strong crossing rivers and oceans. Rounding buildings of mud, thatched roof of steel and glass, concrete and confusion. Still, I am afraid that it will not find me here in this land miles from the one that welcomed me into this world, lifetimes before I existed in this cosmopolitan space. Here, she feels sad that she can now love her grandmother or her homeland through English only. The poet used her grandmother as a representative of her native culture. Then poet says that tears cannot replace the words and language and love is connected that now she cannot love her grandmother properly as she cannot speak to her in their local language. She believed that English is not the only language she can speak. Then she says that wherever she is, she waits to hear the voice of her grandmother or the voice of Nigeria. Her grandmother had strong and loud voice. That is how the Nigerian people were. People in Nigeria in general had the features of her grandmother. But she is afraid that she will not find such love in her new place, which is miles away from her native land. This is all described in these lines. Now let's get in the last lines. Bong nong yimbe yami, bong nong yimbe yami. What will I teach my children? 
what will i tell them of where i've been the earth that shaped me the hands that held me the land that made me what will they call home and will they hear it if and when it calls them my heart still holds the salt and clay of ugap the strength of my woman is in lost in me but sometimes i forget and find it difficult to walk in bare feet afraid to remember that history feels like dust covered and peeking from brown toes okalama dc brooklyn will not help me remember ikam ugap kalabar they will also not let me forget fingers sticky with foo foo swallowed whole or tongue stinging numb from plantain fried in palm oil but i have lost the grit and the grain of my grandmother's gary i can't taste past this nostalgic lump in my throat can't stomach the reality of this divided culture african american i'm everything and i'm nothing nigeria quietly begs me to remember while america slowly urges me to forget but it's for my past it's for my future it is for my children and it is for you grandmother that i must always always remember in this poem she uses her native language in different lines Here the poet is so conscious about what she will teach her children about her native land that shaped her she has forgotten the culture of her homeland she fear that will her children be able to manage if they have to go back to their homeland even poet is facing difficulty in going back to nigerian culture and language english has dominated in her then she says the name of some cities those cities does not make her remember her homeland they force her to forget it she have to live as an american if she live differently in america then she will be considered as an outsider so the busy life in the cities of america never help her to remember the relatively slow lives of african cities she remembers some foods of nigeria she cannot forget the taste of them but she seems to have lost the taste of a dish named gari that is made by her grandmother maybe it is a representation of the flavor of african culture there is a division of culture there is a struggle between two cultures going on in her mind basic p once had a mental disorder and doctors called it bipolar 2 disorder in the next lines of the poem she says that she is everything and she is nothing no one can be everything if someone is everything then she or he is nothing when nigeria begs her to remember america urges her to forget the homeland Finally she says that she must remember Nigeria always that is for her past future children and her grandmother this is the overall meaning of the poem in the poem we can see the struggle in poet's mind to remember her homeland and its culture the poet used her grandmother as a representative of the culture of Nigeria which is her native place that's all about this poem thank you for watching